you are going to play me at the collision. Fine. You're seeing two of the best teams of all time. We won one, they won one. Let's let this third one decide it once and for all. This is not going to go well. There he is. Hey, hey, Alex. Hey, Thad. Thanks for coming over. Sure. Uh, congrats again for the live event. Oh, you, yeah. You really smoked them. It was fantastic. Thanks. So I've got some interesting news. Okay. Uh, unfortunately, Sam Whitwer is not able to compete for the next couple of months. He booked a couple gigs, and he's unavailable. We've talked with him, and, and we don't know when he's going to come back. Okay. And I feel really bad because I know you two would plan this big title fight. Yeah. And uh, we've talked it over, and we've decided that... Um, we're actually going to make you the reigning Star Wars champion uh, because he's unable to fulfill his duties, and so it's all yours. Uh, congratulations. I mean, that's a beautiful belt and all, but I don't even want to touch it right now. What do you mean? You're the, you're the Star Wars champion. Just, gonna... Congrats. No, I think I need to earn it. I can't just take it. That's not fair. So... So you mean I have, to, I have to find you another competitor? Could you, yeah, just put out some feelers, find someone that thinks they could take me on? Oh, gee, I mean, I'm gonna have to make an open call. I, I can't give it to, I can, can can't compete right now, so I'm gonna have to find someone, okay. All right, fine. Well, I'll try to find somebody. Uh, if you can make it back for the collision, I'll, I'll, I'll get you a competitor. Yeah, I'd really appreciate it. Thank you, Thad. All right, my job never ends. O and two is definitely not where Scarpino wants to be right now. When I get on a plane to LA, I come here to win. I will not leave this place O and three. And your winner, ladies and gentlemen. It's better sweet. It's better sweet. team match today and I am honored to be Ken Napsok and I'm honored to be joined by Brianne Chandler Miss Movies the 2000 what year is this 18, 18. free for all winner making her debut today. Oh my goodness, free for all winner. I'm just as shocked as you are about actually having achieved that. Can I make a confession to you? Uh, I was sure. at the announcer okay, yes. booth when this was happening, and mm -hmm. I was looking at the math, and I was looking at the way you were okay. playing, and I was looking at the way you've been making choices lately oh. for your own benefit, something I love and respect, and I was like, I think she's got this. I wish I'd bet on you. I would have uh, won a lot of money. So congratulations I mean, to you. How much again. can you win if you only put on $20? Uh, I'm not good at math. Other people are. Okay. But here's the thing, you know, I recently had some problems at the live movie oh, trivia showdown. I did see some that. Some things I was there. worked against me. Fair question in the end that got me. So I could still use a title mm -hmm. shot if you, uh, you know, want to find it in your you heart. You know what? Let me know. I'll put you on the list of all the people that are interested. I will. I did that, but I mean, you came to me before. This is the second time that you're yeah. coming to me to ask for this. Right. I mean, not, not directly ask for I this, but, you know, indirectly. Understand completely. So. Well, let's talk about today's <laughs> match, Brian. And we have got some teams making their debuts, but also a returning player who knows the rules, but maybe is looking for a little bit of redemption here. We have Kinda Funny, which is Nick Scarpino and Game Over Greggy, uh, versus Funhouse, James and Elise from Rooster Teeth. 
What do you know about these teams? Um, what I know about these teams is they are very big in the video game industry. Ah, uh, yes. And they are very big on Patreon as yes. well. And that's actually how I found Kind of Funny. I was a patron of theirs. I still contribute to them as well. And um, I basically paid to go on their show. That's through Patreon, cool. and that's how I, that's how we got here. That's, that's how, how got they're here. here. And through those what? experiences, it's led you to be uh, work extensively and, and have office hours with the Schmodown Patreon. That's going pretty that's good. That's right. Too. Because of my relationship with Kind of Funny, that's the reason why we get to do this today. What do you feel about these teams? We're going to hear from them in a second with their promos, but I want to know what you know right now about these teams coming into this match. Oh, coming into this match, gosh, I I know that Nick is really. Hungry. He's hungry for that win. Uh, James and Elise are new, so I don't know what they're going to bring to the table, but I do know that they're going to know something about Jim Henson for sure, because okay. I know Elise is, is a Muppet connoisseur. Uh, you know what? As someone who grew up on the Muppets and used to watch the Muppet Babies every Saturday morning up until I was probably comfortably old to be watching it for the demographic, <laughs> I respect that a lot there. Well, uh, let's not give our own insight here. Let's hear directly from the teams with some promos now. Ladies and gentlemen, you asked for it, you got it. I'm back, one of the top competitors in the singles league, and I was like, you know what's better than losing over there? Maybe winning in doubles. That's right, I am here, and I am tired of getting my ass kicked in by myself, so I brought in some backup. My name is James, and this is... My name's Elise, and we're yeah. from Funhouse. Yeah, uh, Funhouse is a comedy gaming channel. Um, known for obscure movie references in things that shouldn't be referenced, and uh, and yeah. Yeah, maybe we should stop doing that. Ladies and gentlemen, they call him the gruesome Greggy. They call him the game over Greggy. They call him the champ where I'm from. Please let me introduce, it's my honor to introduce you, my partner today, Mr. Greg Miller. Trending Gamer 2015, Greg Miller. Schmow down, people! I'm sorry. I didn't know this thing mattered on YouTube. We've been sending D-League Nick Scarpino right. to come represent Kind of Funny. We're here today because Nick Car Scarpino challenged us. Uh, he he thinks that this is going to be an easy win. He hasn't had an easy it's win not. in his life. No. no. He, I think he's, he's, you know, some people are undefeated. I think he's defeated. Kind of Funny is 100% getting their first victory in the Schmo down today. It's time, and it's about time. Adam Kovic, mm -hmm. start building two caskets, because once I beat the Willems, I'm going to fucking murder him. Okay. Uh, this isn't a joke. No. This is a confession. It doesn't sound like it. You've made everyone scared behind the camera. Then i for Lauren oh, Okay, he's a big guy. Be careful. Uh, he's a coward, too. All right. Here's what's going to happen today. Kind of Funny. You give us those Muppets questions, you give us those Mission Impossible questions. Oh, give it to us. You're gonna lose. Listen, you can't pick the questions. If you could, maybe you'd have a chance. But those questions, are they're gonna fall on us like raindrops. And we're gonna open our mouth, we're gonna fill our mouths with those questions. And when we spit that water in your face, you're gonna be 0 and 4, buddy. Are we gonna be provided water? Um, do we get water? Do we get any water? Yeah, we get water. So we'll do that. <laughs> it's gonna be the water. All right, you see there, mm. Funhouse kind of saying they're here, they're ready to make their claims, make yeah. their stamp on the league. But I find this interesting, this dynamic with Game Over, Greggy and Nick Scarpino. They've known each other. They work together. Yes. They they drink La Croix together, all right? I think that's how you say it. I'm not, I'm not French. Um, but uh, <laughs> uh, there's sort of a weird dynamic going on here, right? Is there a weird dynamic? Well, I mean, I guess from this promo, for sure, There's definitely my ears are definitely not a hearing lot of properly right yeah, now. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, but I... I, you know, I, I I see what's going on here. Scarpino hmm. struggled. He's a popular player. Sometimes you don't get the questions in the end that yeah. you want. I don't think, uh, I think he's back for a little bit of redemption. But, but uh, Game and Over Greg, you're coming back here kind of saying, we're going to do this right and yeah. we're going to make our name better. He's putting him in his place. Yeah. He's getting him to get this win today. And I do have championship belt envy there with uh, some of the stuff hmm. going on there. All right, those are the promos. Here are the strengths. Brian, you tell me if I'm wrong about this. Yeah. Talking to both teams before the match, kind of funny how their strengths include video games. Now, I have asked him if that's video game movies uh -huh. or just like me, good at managing my budget on MLB The Show 18. I don't know. <laughs> Franchise mode. Comic book movies and loud yelling. Would you loud agree? Loud yelling. 
100%. Uh, with Funhouse, we've got bad movies, which I actually think is an interesting strength because if you can quote dirty work like I can, you know Norm MacDonald's film canon, it might come up at some point in the competition, James Bond movies and the aforementioned Jim Henson movies. I'm looking forward to that Jim Henson slice on the wheel. It's a new slice, something that the patrons have been asking for. This is our Patreon match today. Ooh. So if you are a patron and you support at the $5 level or above, you are going to get this. Mm -hmm a week before everyone else. This is coming out June 29th to you and to everyone else it will come out the next I week. I love getting things early, especially like tacos at Del Taco before they open. <laughs> it's a good thing. All right, with that said, Brianne, I think it's time to get into this match and some intros and get the teams out here. So I asked the fans, are you ready? Because it's time for Movie Trivia Schmoda. <laughs> Introducing first, representing Rooster Teeth and making their Schmodown team debut with a record of zero wins and zero losses, ready for a new start. It is James and Elise, Team Fun House. They got this. They got this. <laughs> They've got the laugh down, which uh, I appreciate. They know how to do this. I like I like the Tom Cruise match. I have seen James wrestle in a wrestling ring. I've seen him. He knows how to do this game here. It's going to be really? exciting. But here are their opponents representing themselves and some drink called LaCroix. LaCroix. They are Game Over Greg and Nick Scorpino, they are kind of funny! There he is. Scarpino out Look, first. It looks like a LaCroix on his shirt. See, this oh. is what I'm talking about. What's happening? That's oh. what I'm talking about. Holding the curtain open for Greg Miller. You can see right there. something going on in the audience right now. Game over. Greggy has got some words for the audience. Uh, I think he's yelling at John Roca, but John Roca often just yells into the air normally. So uh, they are out. Great start. Yeah, Scarpino's right. here. He's the only one with the experience. Let's see how Ooh. that plays coming in here. All right. Well, both teams are at the desk. Uh, Brianne, we're going to go over the rules. We are going to go over, over the, the rules. rules. This is round, round one. one. Absolutely. Teams, you're going to be get, uh, getting eight questions in various categories. We'll let you know those categories. You're going to write your answers down in about 15 seconds. Uh, you do have each three JTE rules named after the great Ecuadorian film reviewer Josh Tapia, as we know. So <laughs> you will have the ability to ask for a repeat of the questions, but each team three per game. Don't uh, forget that there. Uh, we uh, want you to say your name, uh, say the answers, show us the board so we can confirm that you didn't have any kind of shenanigans in writing down. So so, uh, are all teams ready? Funhouse, are you ready? <laughs> We're ready. We're ready. <laughs> yes, I love it. I love this show. <laughs> kind of funny. We Thanks, love Elise. you. Are you ready? Kind of Could funny. Could not be more ready. We're ready, Tony Schiavone. Whoa. Whoa. That's Whoa. right. Here we go. Then it's time. Oh, boo yourself. Let's get ready to schmodown. Three rounds to a finish. All right, Brianne. Yeah. Miss Movies has. The first question coming in. The first question comes to you in the form of movie quotes. The quote, you mean you have to use your hands? That's like a baby's toy, is featured in which time travel film? Yes. Is that what we're going yes. with? Yes, you, yes. Sorry for the stumble, yes. Smooth operation we, you run here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, well, first one's out. How do you feel? You good? You going? Really oh. gonna have, we have a countdown you here know, in five, four, four. three, two, one. Looking for answers. Nick, show uh, us your back answer, to please. The future two? That's correct for correct. a point. Fantastic. We won. Oh, Woo! Yeah. Whoa, whoa. See you later. There's more. There's uh, more. We have three rounds. Three rounds. Okay. <laughs> Elise. <laughs> I wasn't, in it. I wasn't in that movie. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, Tom. Sorry. Game over, Greg. 
<laughs> Back to the Future Part 2. That is correct. Thank, Thank you, Tony Schiavone. Thank you. Listen, I've never seen this, whatever they're talking about, but I'm pretty sure it's from Toy Story 3. Uh, oh. Incorrect, incorrect. Oh. Kind of funny. That was a good it. guess, though, no. I will say. Two point yes. uh, I just realized she's doing Tom Cruise, and it's spot on. It's, it's it spot is. on. It's really good. I'm glad you just picked that up <laughs> just <laughs> now. Just You're now. ready, Greg. Okay, now, now, now get some All right, second question. Kisses. Second in question second. comes in the category of action slash adventure. In what film do two boys and a girl hitchhike across cross country to compete in the ultimate video game championship featuring Super Mario Brothers 3? Uh, you know, once hitchhike for an entire summer. Don't fuck summer. this up for me, Nick. <laughs> you hitchhiked once before? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Greg is really, really fired up today. Five, four, three, two, Don't mouth one. So Time's up, on, pens guys. down, pens down. Looking for answers, starting with Elise. Oh, hey, Come on, just write right. something. Yeah. Gotta write something, Tom. Right. You weren't in it. It's not All too right. late, audience. You can get behind the winners. All right, Greg. The wizard. That is correct, correct. for another point. James. Wizard. That is correct for a point. We will accept Scarpino. that. The wizard. We yeah! Come on. Hey. Whoa, Greg. Four, one, <laughs> lead. Four, Good one, job. Lead. Keep it up, buddy. I didn't remember it until last minute. <laughs> All right. Coming up in uh, now is the question. Third question three comes to you from comedies. A 35-year-old video game tester has to move in with three elderly women in what film? My apartment lease is up next month, and I think this is a good plan of action. Uh, you know what? This is definitely a plan of action for you specifically. Yeah. I th I'd be okay with it. You could, it could be like a Golden Five, Girls reboot. Four, three, <laughs> two, and one. Pens down. Look for answers. Starting with Game Starting with Greg. Yeah, Grandma's boy. That is correct. Thank you. Excellent. Mm. James. Mama's boy. Oh, oh, so close. So close. Scarpedo. Grandma's boy. Correct. There, there it is. <laughs> Tom Cruise. Ooh. It's Grandma's boy. Yes. Okay, thank hey. you. Elise is on the board. All right. Very exciting. Your fourth question comes in the category of directors. Directors. Who directed Labyrinth? Who directed Labyrinth? You enjoy that film? I enjoy that film. This mm -hmm. is one of the movies that I probably watch most frequently in terms of sci-fi. Fireys scare me. Oh, I'm sorry about Five, that. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down, pens down, looking for answers. We're starting with James. I'm gonna go Jim Henson. That is correct for a correct. point. Scarpedo. Oh. <laughs> that makes more sense. I put Robert Zemeckis. I was oh. I mean, that was a good, oh. that's a good dominant guess. director of the time. Elise. I don't know why I put Frank Oz. Oh, oh no. no. You think too much, Tom. Game <laughs> <laughs> over, Greggy. My Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, have you heard of the good news? Uh, I have. <laughs> I have, but unfortunately, incorrect yeah. answer at this time. He's the reason for the season. <laughs> All season. Boy, oh boy. You're going to be up You're gonna be up tonight thinking about that one. Yeah, that was a hard one. It's okay. I missed the candle question the first time. Right. You never live it down. Moving on to, down. to question five. This is movie release dates. No. Double Dragon and Street Fighter both came out in what year? If you don't know, just guess a year. That's yeah, what I do. Pick, there's like over 100 years to choose from. <laughs> Maybe even yeah. 200? Yeah, Who knows? I don't We're know. getting there. I don't know when time starts or ends. Five, <laughs> four, three, two, one. Starting with Nick. Stab in the Dark, 1992? You are close, but no cigar on that. Elise? 1994? Yes, That's correct for you points. got it. <laughs> yeah, Greg? Were we talking about the movies or the games? We're talking about the movies. Oh, okay. This is the movie, movie. trivia yeah, schmo. I feel like that wasn't clear enough. I guessed for the games 1988. Oh, Thank mean, you for that guess. I appreciate it, James. 1997. Oh, no, no, still no. Ahead. Still ahead. Uh, still ahead. Fuck it, Elise. <laughs> Elise has this one there. All right, no one six. saw Double Dragon. No one saw it. I saw it. I saw it. Okay. Six. Well, uh, sixth question comes in the category of horror. Horror. Whores? Horror, yes. Whores, horror. What horror, horror franchise What's my based... mother have to do with this? <laughs> Whoa. What horror Whoa. franchise based off a video game stars Mila Jovovich? Mm -hmm. How many horror movie game franchises could there be, really? Do you know I have the same dress you have? Do you? Five. I'm very excited four, to see that. Three, two, one. We are looking for answers starting with Elise. Resident Evil? That's correct yeah, for Moit. Yeah, yeah. Game over, Greggy. Resident Evil. That's correct. Take yes. some five leave. James. Resident Evil. 
Absolutely. Keep them pace. it out. Resident Evil. There you go. There we have Excellent. an 8-6 lead. Close game as we start she to come to the like end. a lovely girl. I don't know why they'd call her that. Of round one. Yeah, there's only two more questions so. remaining. <laughs> this is number seven, and it is documentary. What documentary is about breaking the world record for the highest score on Donkey Kong? Oh, I what? get the reference now. Hey, I'm wearing a Donkey Kong dress. Yeah, I just, what do you know? I, just, I feel I just like you're just cheating moment. off me, and I just want to be sad. I see her Someone eyes. Someone cheating! She has Four. prying eyes. He's got eyes. the glasses Three, on. She has prying eyes. Two, yeah, he's got mirrors one. in there. All right. Greg, show us your answer, please. King of Kong. We'll Thank chip you. that, absolutely. King of Kong. That correct. is correct. Skull Island. King of Kong. King of Kong. We got a 10-point there. I you guys be more excited when I uh, no, Yes! You're doing great. You're doing great. Boom! Boom! All right, and Elise. Elise. The journey of Steve Weeby, King Kong. Uh, absolutely. Yes. King, King, King of Kong. King of Kong. King of Kong. Excellent. All right. A little extra detail. A little extra detail for you. Uh, yeah, Nick. okay. Stop showing all off. Right. The Your final yeah. question yeah. is coming up, Rian. This is a Patreon question. It is a Patreon question. We're very excited about that because this is our Patreon match. Mm -hmm. And so, here it comes. Who's it brought to, brought to us by? Harold Gruntajern, which I'm sure I've butchered that. I asked him how to phonetically spell it, but he never really spelled it out for me. I love so that. So that's just how it's going to be. It's like a Douglas Adams Hitchhiker's <laughs> Guide to the Galaxy name. I love it. The category that he chose because of his support on Patreon is animation. Animation. Your final question in this round is Don Rickles voiced what character in the Toy Story films? Mm. If you could voice a character in the Toy Story films, uh, I would you come up with something different? Would have been tanked. Five, huh? four, <laughs> three, two, one. Looking for answers here, starting with James. I'm hungry and I want some ham. Uh, hey. Incorrect. No, ham. John Ratzenberg. What? What? Yeah. <laughs> Nick. John Ratzenberg? Oh, Nick. Fuck. Sorry they didn't teach God, you that yeah. at CrossFit. I'm still hungry and I want something else. Scarpedo. Scarpedo. Uh, yes. I'm just taking a guess here. The dinosaur? No, oh, it isn't. Oh, oh, right. oh, what are you saying? Oh, come on. You got it wrong. Dude, at least I know now. Oh, I know God, it is. Ego, you're all looks. What do you got? I, I mean, I didn't do as bad as Nick because I at least put Rex. No! Uh, but I know it's not Rex. I know it's not Rex. Come on, Greg, bring it back. Mr. Potato. Mr. Potato. You got it. So at the, you, Harold. At the end is. of round one, Conda Funny has an 11 to 8 lead. I think they started really strong, and then Funhouse came back. Brand, we have ourselves a match. We do have ourselves a match. I'm surprised it's this close. I'm it, very excited. This might be the first why, time now, that Nick has been in the league. Well, I was going to say, why are you surprised it's this close? Is it something about Scarpino? You, you doubted well, him mean, coming into this hey, match? Hey, what is it? I mean, the, he Clearly has the weak link of Scarpino. All right. Oh. All right. All right. It's unfortunate. We are now entering round number two, which is affectionately or sometimes inaffectionately referred to as the wheel round. Oh, that wheel is a fickle fate that and wheel. mistress here. We have have got the categories on the wheel. One at a time, you guys will spin as a team, I should say. Uh, you will get the chance to spin again if you do not like the first selection, unless you get opponent's choice and spinner's choice. Uh, we are going to be getting six questions in the round. So, kind of funny, you are in the lead. You have the choice to spin first or defer and have Funhouse go before you. Before we do that, though, this is a wheel that is sponsored by a patron. Ooh. Jake Burnham sponsored today's wheel, and he selected Tom Hanks and Ron Howard to be on the wheel. Oh, for today's I love match. that. I love so that. So thank you, Jake, for uh, supporting us. All right. So kind of funny. We're going to spin first. You are going to spin first. Excellent. All right. One of you can go up and give the wheel a good, solid spin. We want to see some back. revolutions on there. It's Watch funny because he hurts his back Nick, a lot. Have you ever been in He's kind of old. He's old. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right, here we right. go. That's a good spin. That spin is, is good in. Spin. spin is big in. Money, big money, right. no hands, no hands. I love that little kiss you did at the end. Big yeah. money, no Howard, no Howard, no Howard. That's no Howard. All right, his no Emmy, no Emmy. <gasps> Uh, that's a good, oh, that's a lot of revolutions. Oh, we could power oh, a small oh, dear. wind it's coming, farm. It's coming. Oh, 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 Almost oh, a point wow. of choice. Video oh, games, you guys keeping it? You guys keeping it? You gonna keep this? Video game is your call. What do you want to do? All right, let's roll the dice. All bad. All <laughs> <laughs> video <laughs> games. Video games. 
All right. All right. I'll, uh, I'll ask kind of funny questions. How that about that? That sounds like a plan How to about me. That? Unbiased. I like All right. it. All right, guys, you're going to get six questions in this round. Don't forget your JT rules and multiple choice. First one coming in. Which video game character did Jean-Claude Van Damme play in Street Fighter? Guile. That is correct for two points. Two wow. points. Wait, you just want three points. Just all right. Yeah. All They're right. not free when you've earned them, James. Yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> Go back to CrossFit, James. Not <laughs> Second Barry's question. Camp. Second question out of six. In Ready Player One, what is the avatar name of Ty Sheridan's Wade Watts? Did you see <laughs> I did not. We're going to go with multiple choice on this one. All answer. right. Oh. Here we go. Some names I've never seen. A, Parzival. B, Artemis. C, Tracer. D, Ack. That's H. Ack. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to we're gonna shot in the dark. B, uh, That is incorrect. Incorrect. For steal. We'll steal Parzival. That is correct. That is correct. Choice. Yeah. Choice. Choice. One. Nobody saw Ready Player One. Nobody. It's Nobody. Never written. I saw it. We don't <laughs> read. <laughs> All right. Hearts of Darkness. Third. Ready Player One. Everyone knows. Third the horror, question. The Third question. Kind of funny. Who played Mario Mario in 1993's <laughs> Super Mario Brothers movie? Uh, Bob Hoskins. That is correct for two right. points. That's how you do it. One of the all-time <laughs> classics. Fourth Ooh, question. I love that one. his name is Mario Mario. <laughs> Fourth question. Fourth question. How many Resident Evil films are there? Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> you have 20 wow. seconds to answer these questions, I might add. How about multiple choice? Right. Multiple oh. choice. This is not going to help. Have. One through four. Is it A, four, B, five, C, six, D, seven? It's either five. I, think it I don't five. think I could answer five. this one. Five? Uh, that is incorrect for Steel Funhouse. I think we're going to go seven. That is incorrect. Looking oh. for six. Are you counting oh, 3D? Is 3D six. count as a number? Animated. Uh, uh, Isn't there the animated one? They did an animated one. <laughs> challenge. 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 All right. We do have okay. a challenge from James uh, They said movies not made for DVD. All right, we are back. We had an elite team of experts gather around the Google machine, and we've come up with this. The challenge will be overruled. Six theatrical release. Resident we Evil. We agree with your decision. Films. Good job, everybody. Great Keep decision over there, guys. Good job. Experts, they just huddled over there. All right, all right. Fifth question. Fifth question out of six. A woman named Rose goes in search for her adopted daughter within the confines of a strange, desolate town in what film? All right. Take a shot with it. Yeah. Silent Hill? That's correct for two correct. points. You guess, but you got it. Sometimes the knowledge. Don't be afraid it. to clap for winners, you fucking losers. Whoa. Wow. <laughs> His word is not, His word right. is not mine. Final question in this category of video game pictures is who plays President Will Cooper in Pixels? There was uh, a. I know. Yeah. We didn't Same. prepare for Kevin Pixel's James. question. That is correct. correct. Two points for Kevin James. Oh, wow. And underrated Absolutely. Phil Pixel. 19 to 9. Funhouse yeah. yeah. still it has exactly And rated. it is chaos in the studio. It is chaotic <laughs> indeed. You said it, Miss Movies. We are now going to go to Funhouse. James and Lisa, it's your turn to spin. Someone step up and give us a spin. Show Come on, muscles. Yeah, show those muscles. All right. Why don't right. right. you land on Ron Howard like you want? Oh dear. That All was a right. great spin. Spin is in, spin is in. A lot of revolutions on the spins today, Brianne. I'm liking that there are, oh, Meryl, Meryl Streep cheer is happening in the audience. Meryl Meryl is Street. she even on there? Well, she is, her picture's on there. Is it? Okay. Her picture All is right. there. Oh. Down to oh. Jim Henson movies. Jim Henson movies. Are you going movies. to take it? Are you Meryl going to take it? Meryl Street. It. I guess I guess we keep it. But now there's there's so much pressure though. I know. That does happen. Right. When you get your strength. Right. I'm gonna need an answer. I'm gonna need an answer. Are you guys Let's do it. I guess let's do it. They're gonna all do right. it, alright. Here we go. So there's this, so much pressure. There's so much pressure. pressure. This was a, a listed strength of the team, a little a fumble early in the game that sometimes happens, but this is a redemption round potentially here for Funhouse. Six questions in the category of Jim Henson. Jim Henson. 
First one, in the Muppet movie, which comedian cameos as a sarcastic waiter during Kermit and Miss Piggy's first date? Steve Martin. That is correct. Oh two oh, points. Steve Martin. She loves Steve Martin. I love Steve Martin. Absolutely. You got a Steve you Martin know, category? One of the reasons I got into comedy <laughs> was Steve movies. Martin Absolutely. and your favorite movie shop girl. That's right. All right, second question. Second question. What Academy Award nominated song is featured in the Muppet movie? Rainbow Connection. Rainbow Connection. Two points. The lovers, dreamers, and me. La 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 la. Just so you guys know, wedding first dance. Rainbow Connection. All right. All right. All right, oh. sounds good. Uh, just the muscles. So, just so you know, I'm going to die alone. Here we go. Okay. In what Muppet film does Kermit lose his memory? Muppets Take Manhattan. Absolutely. An underrated Muppets movie. Elise was afraid of this category. Thought yeah. there would be a lot of pressure. Yeah. But she is handling this category right. so well. He got hit by a car. Okay, we are going with your fourth question. Fourth question. Who plays prison guard Nadja in Muppets Most Wanted? Oh, that's a garbage movie, but it was Tina Fey. That is correct <laughs> with two points. <laughs> All right. All right. Here we Catching up now. go. This would be... Greg Miller's looking All right. a little Fifth bit nervous. Fifth of or six not. questions. Fifth of six questions. In Labyrinth, what is the name of Sarah's baby brother? Boy, what boy? He is rolling around in her mind. Multiple choice. All Go right, ahead. multiple choice. A, Toby. B, Caleb. C, Michael. D, Joshua. I think it's Michael. Gonna need an answer. I know Labyrinth that well. <laughs> Coming down in five. Is it Michael? That is it. incorrect. Incorrect for a steal. Kind of funny. It's Toby. That's you moron. Right. It is Toby. It is Toby. That is right. One more question I don't left. I labyrinth that well. All yeah, right. We're the Caleb. Two. <laughs> All right. <laughs> labyrinth is like this one. Final question. question. Final question. In labyrinth. What feature-length Muppet film was the first directed by Jim Henson? All right. Shots fired. Um, I guess by it's Muppet, five. do you mean the creations, the like the felt like create? I guess it's Muppet movie. We're gonna need an answer. Is, we're, we're, hey, is that your movie. final answer? Muppet movie? I don't think it's Muppet movie. Though. All right, incorrect, <laughs> incorrect. Looking for a steal from kind of funny for two points. Did we get multiple choices. No, you did not, not sir. Take us. That's old. Uh, the, it's a Muppet movie. Well, technically, yeah, lab, uh, technically my, Labyrinth my is the right, so gonna answers in Don't five. Don't give them any hits, Elise. Four. I'd say I was three on the move. fucking loose. Two. <laughs> One. One. Need an answer. What do we got? Labyrinth. Uh, incorrect. The answer was the great Muppet caper. Oh. Charles Grodin, oh. Diana Muppet Rigg. Caper. One of the classics. <laughs> All right, that brings an end to round two, but Ooh, movies, wow. we Still have lost. ourselves a game. We have ourselves a game. 20 to close. 17 is in here. All right. All right, guys, we are into the third and final round. This will decide it all. Unless, of course, there's a tie, then we'll go into sudden death. And that's a whole other thing. I get bumped into overtime, so I'm okay with it. Here you go. You are each going to be asked to choose between 1 and 20. I want three numbers from that range, 1 to 20. Those can correspond to categories. You will be asked those categories. You have a 2, a 3, and a 5-point question. The 2-point and 3-point are answered on your own. You will decide after we announce the category, 5-point question you can confer all right with that said uh if you guys are set and ready kind of funnies in the lead you get to choose your numbers first what are your numbers big two 16 21 well that's uh, one, uh two 16 but i cannot accept 21, 21. it's work. too high 32 uh one through also 20 not. <laughs> try it again 40 i don't understand what am i missing 45 <laughs> one through 20 are your choices oh i'm sorry then 120 Thank you. We'll take 13. <laughs> 13, How about that? it is. All right. Two, 16, and 13. You, Funhouse, your numbers. Between 1 and 20, you cannot choose the ones already selected. 3 and 11, because those are our favorite band. band. 311. 311. 311. All right. Amazing. Not okay. really. And, oh, and 6. And 6. 
three, eleven, and six. Those will work. We will accept them there. All right. Uh, I'll be asking these questions in these rounds because you know what? I I'm you're, not allowed. You're an active I'm not allowed competitor. To. Yes. All right. So, Can't Funhouse, look. you are down by three points, which means you will be given the chance to answer first. Your first number you chose is number three that corresponds to the category of Tom Hanks, yeah. America's uncle. Who is going to take uncle. these? Uh, this question. I say America's dad. I'll take it. Elise is going to take it. All right. Two In labyrinth. point question. <laughs> Two point question. Outside of the Robert Langdon films, Tom Hanks has played the same character more than once in one other franchise. What franchise is that? Toy Story? That is correct for two <laughs> points. Nice job. Nice job. Yeah. Two Good. points. All right. Your next number you selected was number 11. That corresponds to the category of action slash adventure. You guys can take this question and uh, jump to the lead. James, you'll be answering this one. Or Tom Cruise will be uh, answering this Tom Cruise this one. for a little <laughs> mojo <laughs> magic there. All right, three point question in action slash adventure. What is the name of the limousine driver that escorts John McClane to the Nakatomi Tower Ooh. in Die Hard? You know, I actually know the answer to this. What? I'm going to go Christmas. <laughs> incorrect. Oh, incorrect. The answer was right. Argyle. Argyle oh. down there. It's a hard one. In it's a hard the one. I like that. I like that answer. Life, that was very what? That was hard. All right. With that incorrect that. answer, Ka Funhouse is going to be given their five-point the question. We are in potential TKO range, Brian. Yes. You've got to get this one correct in order to stay in the game and kick it back to kind of funny. Otherwise, Absolutely. Nick's going to get his first win. What? Absolutely. Look at that, <laughs> Scarpedo. She really believes you. <laughs> All right. Five-point question. You chose the number six. The chose the number six. That corresponds to the category of 90s movies. You can confer. You do have JT rules on the board. Five point question. In 1991's Father of the Bride, who plays the, the eccentric wedding coordinator's assistant, oh. Howard Weinstein? Weinstein, excuse mm. me. Howard Weinstein. Oh yeah, it's Martin Short. And your winner! By way of technical knockout, kind of funny, we were looking for B.D. 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 Wong played Martin Short's assistant. There you go. I can wow. see, though, how you can make that in your guts. Uh, sure. uh, especially, you know, you have to the wording of the questions. B.D. Wong played the assistant to Martin Short's character. So, uh, with that, Kind of Funny has a 20 to 19 TKO victory, Brianne. We're going to hear from these competitors here in a second, but wow, big match. It was a big match. I'm very excited for Nick today, but I'm also excited that Elise and James are local, so maybe they will actually return They've to got the a taste, a taste for blood in the water. They can come back here and compete. But right like now, that? let's go to Jen Sturger. That's Jennifer to you and me, back <laughs> with the winners and losers. What's up, Movie Trivia Schmodown fans? Jen Sturger here with Kind of Funny. And that was kind of good. That was actually your first win, Nick. How are you feeling? Good question. I feel fantastic, Jen. Uh, I was expecting to come win the first three times, and I lost. And then I brought in the big guns, me. I brought me back, and Greg came and brought me some Starbucks. Okay. So, well, I, where are you going to be on that Toby question without me? Huh? Uh, I can't believe you pulled that out. I, I really, I was going to ask answer Caleb, and you said Toby, and I was like, whoa, and we won. <sighs> seems like that some Jim Henson fan would have known that. You know, seems like a Jim Henson fan would. It's know, funny because like, I don't movies ever did. go around purporting to be a Jim Henson fan like right. some other people, right. and right. then because you normally I just drop the ball on everything, but I've never seen anyone drop the ball quite that hard today. As this is an epic today. choke. choke. Okay, but you were feeling pretty nervous that second round when she hit Jim Henson, were you not? I was, uh, because I don't, to be perfectly honest, uh, I, do, I was not happy with my performance today. Uh, I dropped a couple questions early in the round. And, don't be uh, hard on yourself. Don't be hard on yourself. You know, but then I brought Listen it back. Up. I brought it right back, uh, pretty much on my shoulders, the world sits. No, no, it was a team effort. Again, you couldn't get it done without me ever. Just like, I'm the champ, you're the chump. You understand how the relationship works. Don't get a big head on yourself, because I can point to all the times you've lost without me. Well, you know, it was uh, those were warm-ups, and you would uh, you would not even know uh, how this whole thing works without them explaining it to both of us again when we came in. Good point. Uh, I'm pretty sure Greg had something to do with you winning today. Maybe he's your good luck charm. I think so. I mean, I bring him around a lot of places. Uh, he, he gets to stand and get cooled off in my shadow, so it's really nice for him. 
He's taller than you. I'm gonna say, yeah, I was gonna say, Lots short people, people can't cast a big shadow. You know what I mean? Me. I stand on chairs. <laughs> so what's next for you? Uh, I want I want another match, and I want Greg and I to come at at least another team, if not the entire league. I think we have a chance of going all the way. i am be honest with you. A chance? Because we my are mama took one. going all the way. Are I looked we? at your little your little wall wall oh, no. of fame over there. Bring me Miss Movies. Bring me Sam Witwer. Bring me the kid who is the voice of the radio guy in Wet Hot American Summer. I'll lay them all out. I'm not afraid of any of these D-list internet celebrities you got. Sam Witwer is in a game called Days Gone, though, and it looks good. I think we're done here. <laughs> oh, fun house. That was a little rough. You guys came back so hard in that second round. We were all rooting for you. Yes, we did come back very hard in that second round. I mean, I was talking about Elise. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, you know, when we're on film sets shooting Mission Impossible 7, we don't have time to study movies as closely as we'd like to. Um, we're yep. not invited to those film sets, uh, actually. I thought there were going to be more questions about stunts, performing your own stunts, uh, the kinds of different Stun stunts yeah. that uh, Tom Cruise has performed. My feet and levels, but yeah. there was none of that. No, we don't do any of that here. But you did. You were very impressive in the uh, in the Jim Henson round that you picked. I saw you were going to spin away from it. Why? Well, I, you know, I didn't want to put her on the spot. She was her morale was pretty low it's coming a lot into of round pressure. two because she missed the labyrinth director question. I don't know labyrinth though. I don't know. I, you know, you second get you you second guess yourself. You shouldn't, but you do. And I thought maybe it was Frank Oz because Frank Oz seems to have more of like a prestigious directing career than Jim Henson. I'm kicking myself so much. And I know Jim Henson didn't direct the Muppet movie. It's just that time crunch that you get in. Those 15 seconds fly by really fast. And, and I know the limousine driver was Argyle. Why did I say Christmas? <laughs> ah! No, but when you get under those lights, anything can happen. Were those lights shaking you guys up at all? Greg was shaking me up. You know, that's what was shaking well, me up. Well, he was literally shaking the table. <laughs> like underneath it, I don't know if you can see, but he was shaking the table the whole time. I tried to write the Mr. Potato, and I tried yeah. to write it, but he shook it, my pen slipped, I wrote ham, so. Happens all the time. So what's next for you guys? Are you guys gonna come back and compete? Because we'd love to see you around here some more. I would love to, especially now that I think we'll have a flow for it. Yeah, well, I think we just need to find the right division, okay? Because mm -hmm. we're pr kind of geeks at heart. She loves Lord of the Rings. I think we have a fair amount of knowledge we could share in that capacity. He loves so, James Bond. I love James Bond, but you know, I, th I think we, c I think we have something that we can bring to this. Give us a Quentin Tarantino movie. That's something we can both work with. I think. Yeah. So aside from Quentin Tarantino, it sounds like you might be up for some inner geekdom, no? Hey, if it fits and the belt fits, do you guys have a belt for that one? Yeah. Then yes. We sits. <laughs> Wait, no. What? <laughs> if it fits, we sits. Is that? That's a cat thing. Oh. Back to you guys. All right, you heard it there, Miss Movies. We got some spirited post-game comments from kind of funny. Greg came over, Greg, you putting the league on notice. They oh, are re-energized. They are here. They, they are in it to win it. Now, I really like this attitude from kind of funny. It kind of is in line with my thinking towards this league mm -hmm. here. I loved it. But on the other side, Funhouse has some things to say, too. Funhouse looks like they're going to be continuing, hopefully, with the inner geekdom. I, I was really impressed with Elisa in that second round yeah. with Jim Henson, because not only is it just Jim Henson movies, it's also movies that are in the creature feature yeah. um, have come out of that, so it could expand even further. But I thought she did such a great job, and I just I'm looking forward to seeing both Elise and James and what they can do in a different division. I agree with what you're saying there. We're coming to a close here, but I got to say, Brianne Chandler, Miss Movies, an honor to have you sitting at the desk with uh, me here, and uh, I'm looking forward to seeing what you do with your free for all oh, yes. opportunity. Aren't you though? Mm, yeah. You're still on my list. Oh, Ken. I like I'll, being I'll on be, lists. I'll be thinking about lists that. Or good. So that brings to a close today's matchup. First thing here on Patreon, we thank you guys for supporting the Movie Trivia Schmodown on Patreon. Don't forget to share and like the matches when they're on yeah. YouTube. Join the Movie Trivia Schmodown Facebook group. All that good stuff. Closing thoughts yeah. about Patreon, I, you which know, you I are think this, I think this match is worth a dollar. I think it's worth it for a dollar to come and see it early before it goes up on YouTube. Absolutely. That is it. So, we'll see you guys next time. I'm the Pit Boss, Ken Napsuck. That's Miss Movies, Brienne Chandler. We'll see you next time. Bye. Team Action debuted, and everyone said, okay, they have a lot of personality, but what can, what can they do? And what did they do? They wound up getting to the finals of the Ultimate Schmodown team tournament, and they, they lost there against the, above the line. But they had a, an amazing run, and even though uh, Ben Bateman is only one and one, he has made a huge impact on this league with his, his attitude, his, his knowledge. Um, he, every, he's challenging everyone. Let's do something fun, Draco. Let's do this. Let's dance, all right? That's and your correct. winner, ladies and gentlemen, Mark 
We're here to do one thing and one thing only, and that is to avenge this loss. Okay? I'll be back. I'll play that moron Mance. I've had enough of you. I have had enough of you. We faced off in the in the in the doubles, and you know, you with your smug face and your two cool sunglasses, I am sick of your boy. I'm sick of this shit. I'm gonna take you down. I'm gonna challenge you and me. Forget, forget, he's called always gonna be the champ. But I got nothing to lose. I got nothing to lose. Yes, this is happening right now. Are you kidding okay. me, Mance? This All right. Happening. Listen, Mance, I don't think we need to hear anything from you anymore. Yeah, yeah. Okay. champion's prerogative. Get out of here. Got somebody run in their mouth, so I'm going to tell you what's going to happen. Because I'm sick of it, and they're sick of it, and I know they're sick of it. So good at swallowing sandwiches, but he is great at announcing. He is the pit boss, Ken Knapsack. How are you, Ken? I told you that in confidence. I'm glad to be here. My work release program has really stepped it up a notch to let me here. I am happy to be calling this match. Ben Bateman, Scott Mance. This is a matchup in singles, and it could get loud in here. Mance comes into this match as the challenger. He hasn't had the best of luck in singles, and when you really look at both competitors, they're more known for their team exploits. Obviously, Mance is part of the part of Team Trek and Ben Bateman, a part of the dastardly team action. I look at these guys because we know Jason Inman and what he's been able to do in the Inner Geekdom yep. League, but Scott Mance has been a nice compliment to Inman as a team. And then when Mance gets out on his own, you know anything is possible when mm. movie release dates is on the wheel, and it is on the wheel today, Movie kiddies. release dates. Yeah, you saw what happened where Inman has moved on to the five. He's moved on to the five, mm -hmm. but I can tell you I've spoken to both these competitors. I know Jason and Scott very well. We go to uh, Star Trek and Conventions together, and I just throw Luke Skywalker dolls at them. Uh, they are uh, they split amicably. It's not even a really split. It's just different directions. Scott's looking uh, to really start out anew here, and there's a lot going on in the world of Schmodown right now. We got the Collider Collision coming up, Mark Ellis. You've got a special jacket picked out for that occasion. Oh, it's going to be glorious, and it might be the color of blood because there's going to be some in the water that day as well as today. I will remind Ken Knapsack that fraternizing with competitors outside of this studio could be grounds for dismissal as a result of collusion. Ben Bateman, mm. I look at the stronger of the two when it comes to team action. I, I think oh, that, really? I, I think that he knows more. He's more well-rounded mm. than his partner, Andrew Guy, who is a very fun performer. Not much else that I see in that brain as far as trivia goes. Mm -hmm. Ben Bateman and Scott Mance, they're not going to have their compatriots here today. It's going to be mano a mano. Mano e mano. Is that how you say it? I don't know. I, I failed know. Uh, my high school Spanish class, but I'll tell you what. Bateman called out Mance in the post game of his last match and Mance accepted. I think Mance just wants to compete. I think he wants to show people what he's capable mm -hmm. of. But you never know. When the you know, I've seen Team Action get under the skin of Mance and Inman back in the day. Inman confessed he almost uh, wanted to start a real fist fight during that match. <laughs> uh, so we'll see. I, I know Mance, don't let his happy go lucky attitude fool you. This guy is a competitor, and we've got some big stuff coming from the collision. But before we get here, th this match is key because the winner, <laughs> the winner of this this match would move on to face John Roca, he of the Cowboy Hat fame, because that means uh, we get two possible feuds continuing. Team Action, we've seen them with to Top 10. Guy with the big spear heard around the world. Roca still seen a chiropractor for that. And then you got Mance Roca 3, possibility down the line. A lot riding on this match today, Mark. Yeah, hopefully it won't get physical here today. And whether you're a casual fan of movie trivia or you know all the feuds that are happening and could happen in the near future, you're going to want to be a member of the movie trivia 
Schmodown Patreon. Check out our Patreon today. Select which tier is right for you and get more involved in all the carnage. Well, speaking of that C word, we had a lot going on in our pregame interviews. Let's take a look. No nonsense. I'm not here for a show. You wanted a show? I gave it to you. I'm here for one reason and one reason only. And that's to embarrass that ridiculous chimp of a competitor, Scott Mance. Mance in the house. Look, the guy is now permanent part of the Collider family. Perfect time for Mance to return to the singles showdown. Are you kidding me? You need me to play Scott Mance? You know, Mance was in his prime when he played Golem in Two Towers. But he's gotten old, okay? The league has changed, Mance. Your arch nemesis couldn't even make the cast of Space Cowboys. And after I embarrass you, I'm going to embarrass him. He really thinks he's going to beat me? Okay, you know, he got lucky with the team tournament. You know, Mance and him and Team Trek, we shall return. We'll go boldly again. But on the single side, Mance, do I look like I'm sweating here? Do I look like I'm sweating? Do I look like I'm nervous? Do I look like I care? This is the year of action, Mance. You're no action. Get out of here. Go, go, go host the movie review show. You aren't part of the Schmodown anymore. Your man left you, Mance. Here, here's the thing. Ben Bateman, he just shows so much disrespect, not just for the Mance man, but for the entire Schmodown process as a whole. He just gives the Schmodown a bad name, and I'm here to show him a good one. I'm going to go out there, and I'm going to show you, once and for all, you, everybody else, every one of you idiots that thinks I'm not one of the best players in the league, I am the best player in the league. And I will have every belt by the end of this year. The boss. The boss is going to take you down. This boss is going to be the man. Mance versus Roka 3. There are so many reasons why Mance will win. The biggest reason is I just know my shit better than you. I mean, you see there, Ken, again, I told everybody that your eardrums might be ringing yep. after this match, not because we aren't professional and know how to broadcast, it's because Mance and Bateman, they can get up there in the octaves and the decibel range. It's going to feel like the who at Wembley Stadium in here. Uh, absolutely. That's a, that's a good reference to a rock and roll combo I enjoy. I'll tell you, though, Scott Mance, I think his name should be Turn Down the Gain Mance. That's what I think it should be. <laughs> that's for all you uh, audio mixer guys out there. All in the, the engineers crowd. watching us today. Yeah, absolutely there. All right, well, we heard what they have to say. We I have think a tail we, we got a little bit of tail of the tape here. What are these guys uh, good at, Ken? Uh, what are they good at? Well, I'll tell you what. Scott Mance is good at giving hugs. That we know. Good hugger. He has got some traps on him. Um, and he is good, of course, at sci-fi, Star Trek, classics, and his expertise. Movie release dates. And Ben, the boss, Bateman, his strengths include action slash adventure. Also action adventure. Classics as well. He's proven himself in Oscar categories. And I think uh, general new releases the kind of uh, movies these kids are seeing these days with their movie passes and whatnot. Like most great 1960s comics, he only owns one suit, but it feels like a fresh one every time I see him. It is Mance, it is Bateman. We are about to get it on, Ken. And I'm looking at my watch. It does appear that it's oh, 8.05. It yeah. is time to rock. Oh, yeah, then we do. It's time to schmo down. <laughs> Kind of a fake handoff there that I threw deep. Yeah, I don't know what was going on there. You said 8.05. I thought about 6.05, the start of WCW and old TNT and Turner Broadcasting. All right, here we go. Are you ready for your introductions? Here we go. Introducing first. Yeah. Representing Collider. With a record of two wins and four defeats, he is the 2017 Ultimate Schmodown quarterfinalist. He is your friend, the Mance Man, Scott Mance! Scott Mance, coming out, look at the gun! Wow! That guy hits the gym. Wow. That's good tricep, that's good bicep. Wow, look at that! Good forearms in there. He's got a Mance versus Roka 3. Mance versus oh, Roka 3. Oh, look at that. He wants Mance John Roka bad. Roka He's got to get through Ben Bateman. I got you, pal. Mance versus Roka 3. It's happening. Here it's happening. we it's go. It's Mance. Mance is out. Muscles. Mance is out. But introducing his opponent. Uh, representing uh, Team uh, 
Destruction with a singles record of one win and two defeats with one KO. He is the 2017 Ultimate Schmodown Team Finals and part of the 2017 Team Heels of the Year. He is Ben the Boss Case uh, Andrew Guy with his now famous yeah. wolf head cane. Yeah. And Andrew Guy just cleaning off. He's wiping down his. Right. right. Yeah. Yes, Much like you see at the airport. He's yes. uh, shining shoes. Look at that. I've done that at a Chili's too. Um, all right. Both competitors are out, Mark. You know, Ken, I got to just cut you off here real quick. Oh, that's that's good. Man, there's something I'd like to bring up with you real quick. Okay, let's hear it. You know, I've beaten you twice. This will be a third time. And uh, let's well, make this correction. simple. Mm -hmm. You didn't beat me. Your team beat us. You did not beat me. And we are won't. action, Mance. You lost to action. Uh, no, the team but let's, let's move on, lost. Mance. I want your slice. You and, what do you mean you want my space? Your slice, Mance. Slice of Check what? Check your hearing. I want your movie release date slice. I oh. want this face on your slice. And when I kick your ass today, I want that slice. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Going after Scott Mance's pride and you joy there, Ken. You want your account. face on movie release dates? On my slice, yes. No, no, no. See, what happens is you have to earn that. Oh, I will. How are you going to earn that? Uh, well, we got... Uh, okay, here you know, comes Mance, I never Bad enter into a notion, negotiation. A, I can't win. A contract so. going on here? <laughs> really? Okay. Uh, <laughs> Mance is signing his life away. Yeah. What, that what am I signing? We are not yeah. sure what exactly is said in those papers, but it does indicate no, that if Scott signs this, wait a minute. it would be saying wait, that if Ben you really wins, want my wheel slice? he uh, would get really his face on the movie release day wheel slice. Yeah, I see. This is some added so, stuff to the match here. Yeah, I mean, it's it's in one of Thad's famous yellow folders, so you know right. it's official. Right. Wait, 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 that wait, wait, has already been a notarized document and now signed by Scott Mance. Look at that. I, it I feels as though we've been looking live on uh, C-SPAN to the floor of the Senate uh, after that kind right. of debate right this there. Going to get straight to British Parliament here if we don't calm everything down in the studio. So we are going to come back up here at the news desk after putting his John Hancock on a notarized document provided to him courtesy of Commissioner Thad Williams. Scott Mance and Ben Bateman are now ready to maybe not high five, but certainly ready to duel and move trivia for three rounds. Ken, here's how it works in round one. Each competitor is going to hear a series of eight questions these questions are asked to the field. They come from eight different corners of the movie trivia galaxy. Each question is worth one point. There is no penalty for missing a question. There is no stealing in round one. As soon as we finish asking the question, please write down your best attempt at an answer on the whiteboard with the marker provided in front of you. After your 15 seconds are up, we will ask you by name to give us your best attempt at a correct answer. Please show what you wrote on the whiteboard to the cameras at the same time you verbalize it into the microphone. I will remind each competitor of your three usages of the JTE rule throughout the match. If you need to buy yourself some time, not sure the wording of a question, use the JTE rule. Each competitor also has one challenge. Are we good to go? We are good. I'm good. God, Mance is good. Ben Bateman. Where's the belt, Alice? <laughs> then let's get ready to schmow down. Here we go. I did it right, Cap. to the finish. You did. You did. Did it right. Your first question comes from the world of action adventure movies. And your query is, what is the title of the fourth installment in the Pirates of the Caribbean franchise? You don't have to write Pirates of the Caribbean. Just need the surname. Uh, you know, I once fell asleep on that ride and rode it four times. <laughs> they let you do that, huh? Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down, Ben Bateman. On Stranger Tides. Um, that. I, what, does I mean, that uh, what does that say? What does that say? I would. I challenge the answer, I, and it says on Stranger Tides. I challenge Tides. that. I, I, I that is a mess. Uh, I think that's good for me. But I, what, what, what do you think? Okay. Um, no. <laughs> okay. Okay. One point. You got it right, Scott Mance. On Stranger Times. Much better handwriting, okay. Ben. Please uh, improve your penmanship from question one. I've got assistance for that. Ellis, what, what do you want from me? All right. Tied at one. Ken Knapsack has your next question. All right. Question two comes in the category of Oscars. Oscars. This is not Sly Stallone's movie. This is about award winners. What film released in 2002 won Best Picture at the Academy Awards? All right, if I gave everybody in this room right now a dollar if they've seen the movie Oscar, 
How many dollars down am I? We'd owe five to Bibiani alone. Five, four, <laughs> three, two, one. Pens down, Scott Mance. Chicago, bang, bang. Give Let's him go. a point, Ben Bateman. Chicago. All right. Yeah, two to two going into our next category. Certainly seen a lot of this already in the match, and that would be dramas. Your question is, Paul Newman reprises his role of Eddie Felsen in what Martin Scorsese drama? Mm. Uh, I, I'm not sure what noise just emanated from the back of the studio. It sounded like a very disgusted yawn. Oh, five. It was four, actually. <laughs> three, two, one. Pens down, Ben Baben. 1986, baby. <laughs> ben Baben, your answer, please. The color of money. Uh, better handwriting, still not that good. Scott Mann. Color of money, and that is actually true. I did see the color of money when I was a freshman in college. Thank you, man. It's wow. in the way that you use it, Ken. It's tied at That's three. It. I didn't know they had organized Not even mad, I'm then. just impressed. Right. I don't... <laughs> Question number four. Question number four comes in the category of family films. Family films. What actor shows up at the end of the game in Space Jam to help Michael Jordan and the Toons win the game? It's in the way that you mm -hmm. use it. The Nye Mets are my favorite baseball squadron. What? Oh, the, that's from the five, five, four, four three, three, two, two one. one. Oh, we almost set all the numbers together. Scott Mance. I'm going to think like an animal. And whenever possible, oh, yeah. look like one. He got Bill, Bill Murray, Murray and Bill Murray. nailed the different movie. Bill Murray. Bill, Bill Murray. Murray in the best handwriting Bateman has shown Whoa. today. We are tied at four. four. Your next question, gentlemen, from the world of fantasy slash science fiction. And here's your question. This Academy Award winning actress played the titular nanny in the Nanny McPhee films. Hmm. It's taken me a long time to not giggle at that word. It's always a challenge saying mm -hmm. the word titular. Mm -hmm. You've got to get right to the Euler. Five, four, three, two, and a one. Ben Bateman. Emma Thompson. That's correct. One point for Ben. Scott Mance. Oh, and our first yeah, miss of the match yeah, goes to Scott miss. Mance. All right. <laughs> All right. All right. <laughs> Five to four. Ben Bateman still within range of having a perfect round one. If he does get a perfect round one, he will get a bonus question asked just to him. Was that God? I don't know. All right. Question number six. Question number six comes in the category of comedies. Comedies. In the movie Snatched, Amy Schumer's mom is played by what actress? What? Uh, snatched. 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 Titular and snatched. Five. Four. Tough question. Three, two, and one. Looking for answers, starting with Scott Mance. Goldie Hawn. That is correct. Goldie Hawn. That is correct. Bateman All maintains right. his one point lead. And his perfect round, Kenny, That's is right. within striking range of a bonus question. Your penultimate question, that means second to last for everybody at home, is from the world of horror thriller. And your question is, in the film Rear Window, who stars as the beautiful socialite love interest, Lisa Carol Fremont? Mm. You know, uh, yeah. Goldie Hawn was in the crowd at the comedy store, and I performed uh, a couple weeks ago. Really? I made Goldie Hawn laugh. I, I made see her smile. John Ratzenberger not laugh Five, one night. Five, four, four three. three, two, and one. Look for answers, starting with uh, Ben Bateman. Ingrid Bergman. Incorrect. Scott Mance. Grace Kelly. That is correct to tie the game. Tie the game at six. No perfect round there. <laughs> all right. Your last question you, is uh, from one of our Patreon users. Thank you to all of our Patreon users. <laughs> and you can submit a question if you're on that tier of the Movie Trivia Showdown Patreon. The patron that submitted his question today is Jeremiah Spivey. Thank you, Jeremiah, for your continued support of the Movie Trivia Showdown program. And it's in the category of animated. Jeremiah, you have the added pleasure of having your question read by Ken Knapsack. That's right. What Saturday Night Live alum has provided his voice for roles in the animated films Inside Out, Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs, and Sausage Party? So I gather you were trying to make John Ratzenberger laugh. Man. I tried. I failed. I failed miserably. Miserably? The Sausage Party was my name for my eighth Five, grade birthday party. Four, Five. three, two, one. Pens down. Scott Mance first. 
Bill Hader. That is correct. That is correct. Bill Hader. All right. Bill Hader as well. We're tied at seven. Up. These guys know their stuff, Ken. Absolutely. This is a punch for punch fight here as we go into round two. In round number two, also known as the wheel round, the wheel of destiny, the wheel of fortune, perhaps the wheel of doom. There are 12 slices on the wheel. Ten of them are from different movie trivia categories. You also have spinners and opponents choice lurking somewhere on said wheel. In round two, each competitor is going to be asked a series of four questions thanks to one of the slices on the wheel. Your question is each worth two points, so there's a maximum of eight points gained in round number two unless you steal from your opponent, which is legal. If you get asked a question, you're not sure of the answer, you can ask us to provide you with multiple choice. We'll give you four options. One of them is the correct answer, at which point the value of the question goes down to one point. Again, there is no penalty for missing a question in round two. We have a tied game, seven to seven here. It's Theismann to Elway, and so we go to the favorite in the match. That would be Ben Bateman. Would you like to spin first or defer to Scott Mance? I got a good view. Scott, why don't you go ahead? All right. He maybe just wants Scott to, to stop, to stop why does he pushing to go? him. Why, why do I? Why because he he's the favorite because in the I'm match. Better. You're the favorite? Unfortunately. Yeah, you who? More he's losses, favorite, I figure you'd be leaping at the wheel, Scott, because Miss movie movies. release dates is on there. Come on. And I will point out that one of these slices on the wheel is not only uh, has the picture of Scott Mance, there's another slice that's lurking out there somewhere that is a Patreon slice, and that would be Christopher Nolan movies. Mm. Anybody want to take a chance on Christopher Nolan, that patron will get a shout-out. Scott Mance, without further ado, please give it your best spin. Good Old spin, muscly arms spin himself. Is the spin is in. Scott Mance, one of the better, uh, one of the better yeah. distance runners in the league. Oh, can, no. can he spun oh, it? He, he spun movie release days right it. out of the gate. Wow, that Scott is. Scott Mance and Ben Bateman, all he can do is smile through those sunglasses. We don't know what's going on under oh, that suit. Wow, but look at that. Just you got up. him, I got I, him. I got the movie release dates okay. all right. That is, um, wow. All right. Game over, motherfucker. Oh, that is, uh, that's some harsh language You're, you're rolled my slice, Scott. Oh, wow. All right. I'm old. We don't my know slice. whose right. picture is going to be on that slice at the end of the match, but Scott Mance certainly in his comfort zone with movie release dates. Scott, your first movie release date question. In what year was the film Apollo 13 released? 1995. Two points. Two points. <laughs> he is not wasting a lot of time here. Uh, your next question, Scott. Tim Burton's Sweeney Todd, the Demon Barber of Fleet Street, was released in what 2007. year? 2007. Two yeah, more points correct. for Scott Mance. At least he let me finish the question that time, Ken. <laughs> yeah. All right, Scott, your next question. The Clint Eastwood classic Dirty Harry was released in what year? Dirty Harry. 1971. Two more points for Scott Mance. He's one away from a perfect Ooh. round, and he can get it with this next answer. Sam Raimi's horror classic, The Evil Dead, creeped onto the silver screen in what year? Oh, um, 1992? That is incorrect, Ben Bateman, for a big steal here. Gonna need an answer in five, four, three, two. 1986. One. Looking for 1981. 81. 1981. Wow. You might have been 81. confusing with Dead Alive, the Peter yeah. Jackson film, but Scott Mance. At least Mance, I was alive. Uh, a well done, a little uh, stumbly there as he didn't stick the landing, but still yeah, six but points. Good Movie release dates. Very happy. Scott Mance has to do this performance. Yeah, that's a good round. That's a good round. You, you know, you take in command, you're putting pressure on your opponent. That's what it's about. And go ahead, Ben. And there's the spin, spin of the wheel. In. Spin is in. Yeah, not going to get movie release dates. Yeah. Um, what else could be? He could get his picture on the wedge by the end of the match, but he's not going to get that category. Looking at spinner's oh, choice. Spinner's That's choice. just as good as what Scott Mance had yeah. spun there, Ken. He can't. Movie release dates is off the table, but he's got some other choices to get to. You think spy movies for he an action fan? He is fan? going you think to Oscar movies. Oscar movies. Oscar movies. This is a category that Scott Mance knows a little something about, too. Interesting choice by Ben Bateman. Yes. Ballsy. Yes. That was a ballsy choice, mister. All right. All right. Ben, you got four questions in the category of Oscars. First one coming in. Who won an Oscar for playing Queen Elizabeth I in Shakespeare in Love? There you go. Enjoy that. Enjoy it. Five, four, three, two. Judy Dench. That's correct for two points. Two points. Wonder if he knew it. Or uh, he's going to be taking the time. Just funning with us. He's going to do it the whole time, right? 
All right. Okay, second question. What was the last film Tom Hanks was nominated for an Acting Academy Award? Five, four, three, two, and one. Captain Phillips. Incorrect. For steel. Repeat the question, please. All right, so, that's one JT, JT rule. Ken will note it. What was the last film Tom Hanks was nominated for an Acting Academy Award in? Paper? Incorrect. Looking for Castaway. Castaway. Wait, wait. Castaway. No, he was nominated for Captain Phillips. 100% he was not nominated for Captain Phillips. It was a snub. What? He was. He wasn't nominated for Captain he, Phillips. One hundred percent was. Yeah, I'm. I'm right. The Castaway is from 2000. Yeah, I think he was nominated. Yeah. Castaway is 2000. Captain Phillips was. Right. We've got a challenge on the table yeah. here. All right. We have consulted with a number of judges, and the ruling is that Tom Hanks was nominated for a Screen Actors Guild, not an Academy Award okay. for Captain Phillips. Well, the question and the ruling stand as originally called. It's 13 to wow. 9. Both Bateman and Mance missed that. Bateman, two questions left to creep within nice time, one, Shay. or maybe even tie Scott Mance. All right, all right. Uh, we now go to your third question, Ben. Third question. Citizen Kane famously did not win Best Picture. What film beat it to win Best Picture for the films released in 1941? Come on, you're full of shit. The sunglasses are off. Is he milking it for the camera? Five, four, Does he really not know three, it? two. How green one. was my valley? That is correct for two points. I think you knew it the whole you're, time, Kevin. Oh, you're yes. You're not he even a good actor. That. Yes. I knew you knew it. <laughs> you're All not right. even a good actor. All Not right. even a good actor. Final question. Final question. Ben in the category of Oscars. For what movie did Frank Sinatra win his Oscar for Best Supporting Actor? From Here to Eternity. That's correct. Four, we two, are tied, tied going up. in to round three. That's you know, Ken, we had a little bit of fun at each competitor's expense going into the match saying, well, maybe their teams have helped carry them with their right. opponents in various cases. They have proven themselves to know a variety of movie trivia categories so far, 13 to 13, as we go into round number three. And this is the round that will determine the fate and perhaps whose picture is on the movie release dates slice. In round three, each competitor is going to give us a series series of numbers. That series will entail three numbers ranging from 1 to 20. Those numbers are going to correspond to a movie trivia category up here at our answer desk. We're going to ask you those three questions. Your first question is worth two points. Your next question is worth three points. And your last question is worth five points. There is no stealing in round three, and there's no penalty for missing a question. We're tied again. So, Ben Bateman, uh, you and Scott have both earned 13 points. You are the favorite in today's match. What are your three numbers, sir? Three, seven, and 17. Three, seven, Why? 17, seven, going all odds. All right. Um, that's what I'm going to win with. Mr. Mance? Scott Mance, your three numbers that I'm guessing one, will correspond to a fantasy movie. Uh, one, uh, wait, uh, wait, what were yours? You, he had three, seven, and 17. Three, seven, and 17. You cannot take those numbers. I'm going to go with, you ready? Uh -huh. Five, 10, and 15. All right. Ask me why. Uh, uh, why, sir? Why? Because I like the number five, and they're all multiples of five. This is, yes! you know what? This is the Isn't problem cool? when you base all your numbers cool? on Star Trek movies that eventually you run out of references to That's have. I'll tell you um, what. Your first question is going to go to Scott. Man, Scott, I will be administering your questions. Ken will be asking Ben Bateman his. Uh, Scott, you selected category number five mm -hmm. because you're a fan of that number for reasons unknown. It's worth two points, and the category is in the world of the 2000s. Okay. Mm. These are movies released in 2000s. Name the action film released in the year 2000 that stars Brad Pitt opposite Robert Redford. Oh, um, Spy Game. Two points. Two points. And over to Ben Bateman. Over to Ben Bateman. This this match is as good as a vodka in my glass, Mark. This is good. Let's get. <laughs> Are to you it. drinking this early in the day? Yeah, yeah, I am. Good um, for you. Third, uh, your, your, first, your first question, two point question. You chose the number three, Ben. That is the category of Matthew McConaughey. Matthew McConaughey. 
Matthew McConaughey plays a video store clerk who agrees to have his life filmed by a camera crew for a television show in what film? Ed TV. That's correct for two points. Tie this right. game up. Go back to Scott Mance. I have a feeling we're going to be going to five pointers here, Kevin. Mm -hmm. Your next question, uh, Scott Mance. Uh, you selected number 10 because it is a multiple of five. <laughs> it's worth three points. And your question is, in the realm of the 1980s, different decade, different point value. And your question is, name the 80s movie starring Eric Stoltz about a teenager with a skull deformity attempting to live his life as normal Mask. as possible. That is correct. Three points for Scott Mask. Three points indeed. Mask, also a great series of toys that they're going to make onto the big screen. Mobile Ken. Armored Strike Command. I have several of the toys in my closet now. All right. We've got number seven for you, Ben. Your three-point question will come in the category of war movies. Hmm. War movies. Three points. Who plays Command Master Chief John James Urgale in the 1997 film G.I. Jane? Needs to hit this or we'll have to go to his five pointer. Okay. Right, right, right. To five, four, three, two. Repeat the question, please. All right, first one for Ben in the game. Who plays Command Master Chief John James Urgale in the 1997 film G.I. Jane? Looking for answers five. in five. Four, three, two, one. Aaron Eckhart. Incorrect. Incorrect answer is Vigo Mortensen. Vigo Mortensen. Vigo Mortensen also in Young Guns 2. And now That's can right. Ben Babin could be going down in a blaze of glory if he doesn't get this five-point question. He's all of a sudden on his last leg. Sheriff, I think I need to have a movement. Deep cut. <laughs> five-point question. Coming in the category of, so because you number chose 17. number 17. 17? Oscar movies. Oscar movies. All right. Five-point question. Uh, ben, given the nature of this question, we're going to give you a little more time to answer it. It, uh, it just involves uh, uh, multiple factors. So, okay. In Oscars history, only three films have won the big five for Best Director, Best Picture, Actor, Actress, and Screenplay. Name two. Of the films that have won the big five. Repeat the question, please. In Oscars history, only three films have won the big five for best picture, director, actor, actress, and screenplay. Name two. The Silence of the Lambs, One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. That is correct wow. for five points. I, I don't know, maybe he got better at acting from round two to round three, <laughs> nice but job. I really was not sure nice. if he knew that one or not. Nice, yeah. nice to pour on the suspense, Warren Beatty. We go to Scott Mance now. He only trails by two points, but he only has one question left in the bank, Ken. It's his five-pointer, and Scott, he said number 15 because, again, he just can't get enough of the number five, <laughs> and this one is worth five points. And your question is, in the world of fantasy science fiction, and your question is, in The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, what English character actor and Harry Potter veteran plays Professor Kirk, who takes in the pensive children? Repeat the question, please. Second one. In The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, what English character actor and Harry Potter veteran plays Professor Kirk, who takes in the Pevensey children? Can I repeat the question again? No? Yeah, you can. It will be your okay. third and final JT rule. Okay, third and final. And it is again in The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. What English character actor and Harry Potter veteran plays Professor Kirk, who takes in the Pevensey children? Richard Harris? And your winner with a score of 20 to 18, Ben the Boss Bateman. We're looking for Jim Broadbent. Jim Broadbent. Played Professor.
Fessler, Kirk, and Ben Bateman by the skin of his teeth. What a match yes. put forth here by Scott and Mance. What a challenge to Ben Bateman. Uh, we still are sorting out exactly what the paperwork was that Scott and Mance signed. Really uh, an unfair thing to do on the commissioner's part. Just give him a folder of the notarized documents to sign right before the match. But be that as it may, Ben Bateman certainly earning the victory, but a hard-fought one over Scott Mance. Ken, your thoughts? Well, I'll tell you what, both these guys came out on fire. That first round was just shot for shot. Seven Even points each. Second round, they came out tied. Third round, it just came down to maybe the order of questions, what you knew, those pockets of knowledge buried in your mind. Jim Broadbent, whew, uh, that's a great answer, a deep cut. He just didn't come to Scott Mance when he needed it, but don't take anything away from Ben the Boss Bateman. Wow, team action looking on a roll going into Collider Collision. That's right, Andrew. Guys, certainly looking at his uh, teammate with a lot of confidence right now. Ben Bateman, a lot of confidence to strike out on his own as well with team action. And for Scott Mance, he always gives a hell of a show. And today he gave a hell of a trivia performance as well. We're going to have an interview with both Scott Mance, the loser, and Ben Bateman, the winner of today's match right now with our very own Jen Sturger. Jen, take it away. What's up, Movie Trivia Schmodown fans? Jen Sturger here with Team Action and the boss, Ben Bateman. Congratulations on a well-fought uh, match, sir. That's yours now, buddy. It's a good-looking slice. Well, it'll be better Thanks. looking soon. Oh. You know, uh, it was a great match. It was a great match. I'm not really here to mess around anymore. You know, we've got, uh, we've got a performer. We've got a trivia guy on this team. We both do both. All right? You guess which is which. I took this thing down today like I needed to. This slice, it's going to be mine soon. And anything else you guys want to hear from me, you'll hear trivia. You know, that, that was a really well-fought match. That may be match of the year. You know, I think... <laughs> excuse me? Sorry. No, no, nothing. Well, it would have been match of the year if we hadn't gotten cheated at the live event, but, you know, that's cool. Still hanging on to that, huh? Wouldn't you? No. <laughs> Anyways, you did a fantastic job with Oscars. I feel like you're really proving yourself dominant in a lot of different categories and just a more well-rounded competitor. What are you doing to prepare for these matches now that's different from previous? Well, you know, Jessica, as I mentioned, I don't have a lot of time. So if you want to set something up with my assistant, as I mentioned to you last time this happened, we can talk about it a little more then, okay? Cool, Andrew. I'll give you a call. Ah, that was funny, wasn't it? It was funny. Yeah, it was really good. Anyways, the whole point of this match was, one, winning the slice, which is now yours. Congratulations. And two, you're going to be facing John Roca. Hey, it's oh. the cast of the bucket list. Look at this. Look at this. I'll let you handle them. Yeah. Respect. Respect. Well, well. Respect who came before. Oof, man, those glowing okay, right. red shoes. Those glowing red shoes. Yeah, they're good, right? No, no. Ben? How uh, many shirts you have so far? All right, everybody calm down. <laughs> Why are you here, Roka? Ben, you earned your shot. You did a good job. You took care of Mance. You were a kid, you were a rookie. You made your way. Now, you've been talking about facing me, and now it's come. You and me, toe to toe. And this is to get into the singles tournament. You're out your goddamn mind if you don't think I'm going to whip the shit out of you to get in that tournament. Because I want my belt back, boy, and I'm going to take it from you one piece at a time. One little handkerchief at a time. I'm going to take you down. You understand? You know, Roka, I'm going to give that remember, boy a real limp. So last I remember, you were walking real. away when I kicked your ass at the free-for-all. So how about you shut your mouth? You kicked my ass at the free-for-all? You won by one point. How do you define kicking someone's ass? Are you like a dumb? I recall dumb? saying, I recall saying, bye, Roka, and watching yes, your you ass did. walk out the door. You did. And then you walked right what do you out call the door that? right after me. So what are you talking? If you'd won the free for all, maybe you could shoot your mouth off. Look, but you Roka, didn't. Save, you lost. save it for the ring, wild well, there's hog. There's nothing to save. There's all nothing right. to save for you. And listen, I'm gonna send you some money. I'm gonna get you a suit that fits, not one out of a kid's gap. By the way, by the way, this. Never forget. You want to get these shoes on camera? Yeah. Get the shoes on camera. Get those shoes. Get out of here. Get out of here, Ross. Riley. I saw them at Ross Dress for Less. Riley, Get your guy out of here. Get your guy out of here. Did you just show you his nipples? There it is. Tell him, Ross. Hey, thanks, Riley. Nothing but respect for that guy. Real champion right there. I thought that guy was going to kiss you the whole time he was talking and breathing on you. Yeah, it was uncomfortable. It was really uncomfortable. I just was really grossed out by what just happened. That's all. Yeah. You know, Jessica, if you want to set something up, like we said, but uh, we're done here, okay? Thanks a lot. Oh, Scott Mance. Well, Jen. That might have been the match of your life that you played out there today, and it came just short. That was a great match. You know what? All kidding aside, Jen, all the smack talk aside, all the playing up, all the WWF stuff that goes on here at the Collider Schmodown here, that was a great match. Ben played a great game. You know, he knows how to kick up the tension by like waiting before he gives his answers and then he gives the right answers. 
I Did scored, that mess with you at all? I, no, because I knew what he was doing. But you know what? To score 18 points and still lose shows you just how great this match actually was. Ben played a great game, and you know what? It isn't how, how you win or lose, it, it really is how you play the game. That was a really well-played game. Two pros who really knew their stuff, and he just knew a little bit more than I did because I hated The Lion, The Witch, and The Wardrobe. I even think I fucking fell asleep in that movie. It came out in, wait, I wanna, geez, I don't even know when the hell it came out. Like, 2005. All right, is that right? That's probably right. 2005. Why are you asking me? Yeah, the Chronicles <laughs> of Narnia, The Lion and the Witch and Wardrobe. That was that was December of 2005. <gasps> but yeah, that was just a great match. I even though I lost, I still feel really good. Uh, I, so if you're feeling good, I hate to bring up the obvious, but uh, you lost your wheel slice. I'll get it back. I'm not worried about. I, I'll get the wheel slice back because you know what. Movie release dates are still my thing. They always will be. I don't need to have my face on a wheel slice to prove that. That wheel slice will always be mine. Everybody knows it. Everybody who knows me, everybody who knows the Schmodown, everybody who knows Ben Bateman knows whether my face is on it or not. That wheel slice is mine. Mr. Movie Release Dates, it's mine. Movie Release Dates, it's mine. The song is mine. Fight for life. That's just the way it goes. I love it. Oh, thank you so much. Really excited to see what you do next. I know it won't be Roca, but I'm sure you've got something uh, up I your sleeve. I was so close to Roca. Damn! <laughs> I know that's what y'all wanted, right? It's what I wanted, too. It'll happen someday. All right, Ken, well, you see you there. Clearly, Scott Mance, uh, he always has a smile on his face regardless, mm -hmm. uh, but you can clearly tell that he is very, very dejected after losing to not just anybody, Ben Bateman, who likes to rub it in the loser's face from time to time. Ben Bateman, uh, as confident as ever, he might have hit a new level of cockiness. Uh, yeah, you know, team action that just, they keep reaching new levels of eval, <laughs> as you would say, and they are a thorn in a lot of people's sides, but you cannot take away their success. They do know their stuff. To quote Grandpa Sim, and that doll is evil, evil, and he likes Froger. That is going to do it for us here today on the movie trivia showdown. I want to thank Ken Knapsack for being such a great partner with a broad back to carry me, Mark Ellis, Baby Carrots. Make sure you guys check out the movie trivia showdown Patreon. Find out which tier is right for you today. Check out the showdown rundown on iTunes and the movie trivia showdown Facebook page. Ken Knapsack, where can the kids find you? You can find me anywhere at Ken Knapsack. I used to wear an onion tied to my belt, which was the style at the time. Hey everyone, I heard Alex Damon needs a challenger for the Star Wars Showdown Championship, and I'll do it. Alex is really, really good, but I guess, I, I guess I'll do it. I'll see you there. What's up, Showdown fans? Frank here, and it is time for your Schmodown Breakdown. And your winner! It was surely going to be a hotly contested match between Ben Bayman and Scott Mance, Bateman came into this match answering 69% correct, while Mance was answering just 56% correct. Both start with strong performances in the first round, each answering 7 of 8 questions. The high level of play wouldn't end there as Mance spins movie release dates his specialty and goes 3 of 4 for 6 points. Not to be outdone, Ben Bateman lands on Spinner's Choice and elects to take Oscars. He goes 3 of 4 for 6 points as well. And we are deadlocked at 13 apiece heading into the final round. Only 13% of all matches have been tied at the end of two rounds of play. After Bateman misses on his three-pointer, he hits on a difficult five-pointer to give him a two-point edge. Unfortunately, Mans could not respond with a five-pointer of his own, and Ben Bateman wins 20-18. to 18. Inside the numbers, there wasn't much that separated these two all match. Both answered 12 of 16 for 75% correct. Ultimately, this match was decided on what point value was successfully answered in the final round. If you want to find out other stats about this match and from around the league, check out SD Rundown Stats on Twitter. And don't forget to check out the Schmodown Rundown every Saturday on YouTube and the Collider Factory podcast feed. This has been your Schmodown Breakdown.